Dogging Art here, and I wanted to talk today about solo games. Now, there are solo games and there are solo games, more like one-on-one -on -one games. I should say solo games and one-on-one -on -one games. Um, solo games is basically a module you get that you play solo. You follow the module and go to the paragraph. It's kind of like those uh, choose, your, choose your own adventure books, only you're actually rolling dice and, you know, doing the combat. Um, Tunnels and Trolls is king of that. Um, they've got so many solo modules out there because the thing is, it's a regular role-playing game, but it's also for the people who can't play role-playing games regular because uh, they don't know people, they're out in the sticks somewhere, out in, you know, and can't get a group together or something like that. And this was before, you know, internet and play-by-post or internet gaming or things like that. Um, and they were very successful at it. Um, you can still find them, and some of them play pretty well. I don't really care much for solo gaming, to tell you the truth. Even TSR turned out a couple of them. Um, I just, I would rather wait for a group or do it on the internet now. Um, but there are times when you don't have anybody to uh, game with, so it's great to have it there, really. There's also what I call, what they call one-on-one -on -one gaming, which is one player and the game master or the dungeon master. And that usually comes about by, like, everybody but one person showed up for the game for some reason or another. Or you can only grab one person. Or, like in my case, my grandson wants to play, but he's the only one around. There's no other kids around. So it's called one-on-one. -on -one. Now, you can use anything, any module, any adventure, or you can come up with something yourself to do this. It's just that, say... You're using, oh, I don't know, Horror on the Hill, which is an old uh, TSR D&D &D module. And you run him through it. Well, he's going to die real quick. Because the modules are made for a group of people. So the monsters, traps, and hazards are geared towards that. There's also things that can stop him cold. Say if you say your your one player is playing a fighter, and you need to have him pick a lock on a chest. Well, there's no thief around, and uh, the magic user can blast it with a knock spell or something like that, or even even better, a locked door. You know, yeah, he can bash it in and stuff like that. But if you know if you don't want him to, see, he doesn't want to set off the trap and stuff. What are you going to do? Um, so you've got to scale it down. And I know that's not an easy thing to do. Um, first of all, you just got to think of, actually, the, the, some of the parts are easy. It's like, okay, instead of throwing uh, two ogres at them, three ogres at them for a party, I'll throw one ogre at them. Okay, fine. You also got to look on the hit dice and things like that. Because, you know, on a solo, on a one-on-one -on -one game, everybody becomes kind of squishy, especially if they're playing first level. First level. And um, so you've got to, you know, think ahead, try and uh, ballpark it ahead. Um, fortunately, there's a couple, there's one or two things out there that can help you. Um, a gentleman named Kevin Crawford, who runs, Sim, who is part of Sin Nominate Games, he's an author, um, recently came out with a book, actually it's an elaboration of another book, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. Um, for, well, first of all, let me tell you about the first book. This is, you can get this on uh, RPG Now, or Drive Through RPG, right there. And it's called, I believe, Black Streams Solo Heroes. And here's a booklet copy of it that I made. This is what it looks like. It's only a few pages. But it shows you, and it comes with a little two-page adventure, it shows you how to run a game one-on-one -on -one with somebody. What you have to do to, uh, to do the game. I'm not going to go through the whole thing because uh, I'll, I'll get to why in a minute. But he comes up with some pretty neat ideas about, on here, like, oh, uh, reducing the da adjusting, the, not adjusting the damage, but how you read the dice. Um, for instance, if somebody swings a sword at you and it does a d6 of damage, okay, fine. 
ordinarily they roll the dice, if they roll a six, you take six points of damage. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, your character only has six points? Well, he's dead. That's not the way they do it in here. What they do in here is uh, you take the die, and if in the case with d6, it's if they roll a one, nothing happens, no damage. If they roll a two to five, you take one point of damage. If they roll a six, you take two points of damage. And they do this for all the dice. The same thing with a d10, with a d12, with a d8, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, you can extrapolate from there. And um, that makes the games survivable. Um, and that's just one example of here. He shows you how to keep them alive. Um, the, um, there's a die in here. Um, I want to say it's the fate die, but I can't remember the name of it. But... Uh, Fray, they call them fray, a fray die that you roll with your damage to see if you take anybody else. And it's similar to, D, to uh, Tunnels and Trolls spite, spite damage. And those are just a couple of things. I don't want to go into big detail because he elaborated on this and he recently released Scarlet Heroes. That is a full PDF slash book that you can buy now that lays it out for you and you can either use this as its own role-playing game or you can overlay it with any role-playing game you want uh D, &D rune quest uh, castles and crusades things like that and he gives you a lot more tips for that um i would like to do a review of it eventually as soon as i can get up the you know the the money to do it because it's after the con and i'm broke but anyway um, S Scarlet Heroes, it also won the Three Castles Award at North Texas RPG Con, which is a very prestigious award. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing it. But in the meantime, this one doesn't get into mu as much detail, but it's free and it'll get you going. I understand there's also a player's quick, there's a quick start guide out there for free for Scarlet Heroes that's also free. So you might want to check those out. Once again, it's... Um, drivethroughrpg.com or rpgnow.com. So, okay, um, that's all I got for Solo Heroes right now. And uh, don't forget to drop me a line at oldmangrognard at gmail.com. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>